Mick O'Farrell's Pale Olive Cruncher has proved to be a very effective pattern from April onwards through into early summer, especially when pond olives are hatching. So the first step is to run the tying thread on, just behind the eye, securing that loose end in place, and then trimming it off. Then we carry the thread on down the shank in touching turns until we reach the bend. With the thread positioned roughly opposite the barb, we tear off a few fibres from a dyed olive golden pheasant body feather. You can also use the crest feather dyed olive. So having selected a few fibres, we offer them up to the hook, position them on top of the shank and catch them in with a couple of thread turns to form the tail. And then we take from the spool a length of fine gold wire position the wire just in front of the thread on the far side of the shank and then secure it in place with two or three turns of thread. Draw the loose end through so that we don't have to trim it off and add a couple of turns just to secure it in place. Now take a few fibres of dyed olive pheasant tail. Now these are dyed on a natural pheasant tail feather not a bleached one so they have a an olivey brown hue to them and then we offer them up to the hook a couple of turns just to catch them in place and draw them through that done wind the thread back up the shank in close turns locking the waist ends of the materials firmly in place and forming a smooth base on which to wind the pheasant tail fibers Now in order for the rib to protect the body material properly, what we do is we wind the pheasant tail fibres in the opposite direction to the way we normally would. So we start to wind it towards us in close turns, building up a nice tapering body, carrying it on up until it reaches the thread. Bring it up and round, a couple of turns to lock it in place and then we can trim off that excess. So with the body material now in place, we take the wire and wind it in the normal way in a forward spiral, nice evenly spaced turns. So we uh, secure that pheasant tail. We uh, secure the loose end, turns of thread, and then simply wiggle the wire back and forth until it fatigues. And that saves us blunting our scissors. Now the thorax comprises a small pinch of light UV olive ice dubbing. So we take a pinch and offer it up to the thread. This is just going to be a simple finger and thumb twist. Then we carry it on up until it's just short of the eye, just creating a small thorax. With the thorax in place, we now prepare a dyed olive hen hackle by stripping away the fibers from the base to leave a clear section of stem. Then we offer it up to the hook and catch it in just in front of the thorax by that bare section of stem. That done, we grasp the tip of the hackle with hackle pliers and then begin to wind the hackle on just in front of the thorax. Carry on winding the hackle until two or three turns have been applied. And then secure the tip with tying thread. That done, simply trim off the tip of the hackle plus the hackle stem. Then stroke the hackle fibers back and apply a couple of thread turns in front of them. 
Now take a medium sized jungle cock feather that's been dyed yellow and split it down the middle. You'll find that many of these feathers are actually split already and it's a great way of using up a medium sized feather on a small fly. So take one half of the feather, offer it up to the hook and then catch it in place. Then take the other half, offer it up to the other side Again, a couple of turns to just catch it in place. And then position it with a few more turns of thread. Then simply take the scissors and trim off the waist ends. Then build a nice neat head. and cast off the thread with a whip finish. Finally trim off the loose end of thread and there we have it, Mick Farrell's Pale Olive Cruncher.